From the Telegraph, Israeli teenagers risk being sent to prison by refusing to join the army. Yes, here, the violence behind the draft or compulsory service or compulsory anything is laid bare. But it is so nice to see the hypocrisy of Israel exposed by the people it claims as its own. To some, they are heroes ready to trade their personal liberty for the sake of high principle. To others, they are spoiled rich kids shirking their national duty on the backs of the less fortunate. Now dozens of Israeli teenagers face possible jail terms and blighted career prospects after declaring that they will not join the army because of its war crimes in the occupied Palestinian territories. Their stance is a wholesale rejection of the political consensus in Israel where army service is seen as a near sacred duty essential to protect a country surrounded by enemies. But it has drawn a rebuke from one of Israel's most powerful politicians who has accused the youths of dodging responsibility. <sighs> do, I, do I really have to translate this? State propaganda? Dodging responsibility? Hey, if you don't kill people for us, you're dodging your responsibility. The collectivism here is so dangerous, and, and, and I love that it's, it's laid bare. By these, by these refuseniks, we, the undersigned, intend to refuse service in the army, and the main reason is our opposition to the military occupation of Palestinian territories. Now, this is, this is so much more important because uh, the, the letter gets into, uh, which is directed to Benjamin Netanyahu, Israeli's prime minister. It accuses Israeli forces of committing human rights abuses and war crimes on a daily basis, including assassinations, torture, and collective punishment. It also charges the army with damaging Israeli society and creating a violent and militaristic masculine ideal where might is right. It shapes the educational system, our workforce opportunities, while fostering racism, violence, and ethnic, national, and gender-based discrimination. Now, this is the first mass refusal in the last decade that we've seen in Israel. And that's why this is so significant coming up in the news now. But it has finally gotten to the point where this is how the paradigm in Israel is being challenged. Because the reason they get away with this, I mean, why does the Israel government get away with pointing guns at people and threatening to send them to jail if they don't go point guns at other people? Well. They, there's a certain critical mass of people in Israel that support these policies. So, as uh, Mr. Lapid, the uh, Israeli finance minister, in, in, in fighting back against this, said, their secular evasion is not ideological. It is the pampering of wealthy youngsters who believe they deserve everything when others, your sons and mine, have to serve in the army instead of them. I'm ashamed of them. So if you have like a good or a service that you're offering here, like protection, and people don't want it, is this really the way to get them to do it? Well, only if you control all the guns in society can you bully people into, into forcing, uh, or into accepting your service here. But really, it's, it's more important uh, to point out that, that, you know, that this is a, a, a greater uh, statement about the nature of defensive militaries because they are counterproductive. That's right. Having a military makes you less safe. The, and and the, the people who are signing this are actually from a variety of backgrounds. So um, there's, there's a quote here from one of them. I think the people who say this are trying to paint it as if going to the army protects. I think going to the army is actually damaging my security as a citizen. I am terrified of missiles. I am terrified of, of explosions, of sirens, of all those things. But they won't be stopped if we continue doing offensive acts in the name of defense. Blah, no shit. I mean, if, if, uh, th does it really have to be stated? Well, yes, when, when a government and a society has gotten so out of touch with reality, a as Israel has, and, and become really, a as their people, such victims of a government that is out of control, that is, uh, you know, ca causing so much uh, death and destruction and pain and armed conflict. Uh, one, of, one of the uh, refuseniks, daughter of a, a, a British born mother, said, If necessary, I'm willing to go to prison saying she had witnessed military violence while attending demonstrations against Israel's separation barrier in the West Bank. The main purpose of the letter is to promote dialogue. We want to raise the question that is never asked, which is that serving in the military is seen as a matter of course. Now, in Israel, if you are uh, you know, an Orthodox Jew and you are committed to you know, a life of, of religion, then it is possible to, uh, to get an exemption that is somewhat accepted, although still largely derided by mainstream Israeli culture. And what we, what we have now is people finally, in, in mass, standing up and saying, on, on, on the grounds of this in and of itself, I'm not coming up with some other excuse. It's not because I'm religious. It's because this is bullshit. 
violence, I refuse to participate. And having a military makes you less safe because in order to exist, it has to violate your rights. Therefore, you live in a society where the government can simply, I don't know, point a gun at you, call you off, and throw you in jail if you refuse to engage and participate in its violence. Did pretty well part of the way, but... So, wait, wait, so now you're comparing Mitt Romney to a Ford Focus. <laughs> It's hard to let go of fear, isn't it? You're becoming part of a system of material support for the actions of our military.